The next person I'm introducing needs no introduction. Uh, sometime, I hope, Bermuda will acknowledge the debt we owe this man. Uh, it is his vision that not only has brought the America's Cup to Bermuda, it is his, vis his vision that uh, basically when we all said, you know, it would be really good if we could get, uh, and it's an extraordinary uh, transition because the bid team thought it would really be good if we could get a World Series event, but we, you know, the America's Cup may have been beyond us. One man kept saying to us, uh-uh, you're, you're going for the real thing. He believed in Bermuda. Uh, he continues to believe in Bermuda. He continues to push us hard. He is probably, in fact, is the most recognized, the most internationally awarded sailor in the world. We don't, uh, we don't understand. We're not very good with dealing with celebrities. But the gentleman I'm introducing is effectively, if there is any such thing, uh, is a member of the royalty of the sailing community. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Russell Coots. Mark, I must say thank you for that very generous introduction. Of, uh, it's, it's not often I'm introduced like that. So it's great to be back on the island. Uh, really, really, uh, I've been looking forward to being back here. And I'm actually, um, relating to Dean's words, bringing my family here uh, for their first visit. My three young kids uh, in early October, I think we arrive here October 2nd. Uh, and that's our first chance as a family to be here and enjoy the island. Just before, I'm going to say a few words on um, some of the detail around uh, community outreach, the Endeavour um, sailing program that we're, we've been developing on the island in a moment. But before I get to that, I just uh, I just like to endorse something that Dean said. We're we're, we're about to give you uh, quite a lot of detail on, on on what's happening and what's coming up. But when you boil it all all down and you you, you strip a lot of that detail away. It's, it's about some of the, uh, the best sailors in the world coming here, some of the best teams in the world racing on the fastest boats for the oldest sporting trophy in, in, in the world. And I've, I've uh, like Mike, I've just been to the first uh, uh, two events in, in Portsmouth, England and, and Gothenburg, Sweden. And it really was spectacular racing. We've had two different uh, teams win the first two events. The racing's already incredibly close. The teams didn't get a lot of time to prepare in, in these new boats. They're only recently transformed into foiling um, boats just prior to the first event. So they were in the incredibly difficult boats to sail. But it really is uh, quite a spectacular thing to see these teams going at each other. Um, and I said in the Chicago, uh, announcement. We recently announced uh, Chicago as, a, as an another venue for the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series a few days ago. And as I said there, I was uh, talk speaking to one of the, the uh, uh, sailors about this, uh, this first leg of the course where they start and they, it's, when the boats are at their fastest point, they're, they're uh, racing across the wind. And uh, ne ne none of these guys, as Mike said, none of these people want to give an inch. And yet, um, one of the uh, skippers was saying, actually, it's quite harrowing because you, you don't want to give an inch, but it's times when the boat might lose a bit of control. It might foil too high and jump sideways um, two or three yards. You, you don't just want the inch between the boats. You want a, a, few, a little bit more distance. So, and they're all fighting for that lead position at the first turning mark. And it's, uh, it, it really is something spectacular to watch. Okay, so I wanted to just give you a bit of information because we've been talking about this um, Endeavour program for a while now. We've, we've, we've sort of seen some activity on the island and I want to start off by uh, thanking uh, a few of the people that uh, are really instrumental or have been instrumental in, in getting this going and, and uh, um, on and managing the program onwards. And first of all, uh, Jennifer Pitcher who I'm actually going to uh, get to say a few words um, in a moment. But Jennifer has uh, been creating a lot of the educational content modules, working with the educational authorities here and so forth. So she's been working on, on, on that part of the program. Um, and Tom Herbert Evans, who's, who's been uh, working hard on the, on, the, on the water side of it. Of course, there's, many, there's a lot of crossover b between those two roles, but uh, They've really put this program together. So this really started off as a, as a 
is a, a bit of a dream in a way, but it's it's developed fast developed into a, a into a re reality. And this really, the, the point of what I'm about to say is to give you people some information on 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 uh, quite a bit of information actually on, on where things stand. So this was started off. The objective with the program is it's an education program. So science, technology, engineering, and math. And as as we said, we've added art into that. So it's now become rather than STEM, it's now become STEAM. And uh, the, what we do is we develop modules around uh, the um, education, the various educational components, and we're really using the sailing part and the connection with the America's Cup as a catalyst to, to or a, uh, yeah, a catalyst to, 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 to make the learning for these kids in some ways more exciting and more interesting. So a lot of the course content, and, and Jennifer's going to talk a little bit about the, some of the first meetings of the teachers where I think they had 48 teachers along to, to go through some of these modules and actually, in, in, in effect, become pupils for, for a few days where they actually did um, some of the some of this, uh, science, engineering, technology, and, and so forth. And, and uh, that was, that was uh, very, very successful. So they, they developed these modules and we also use our, our um, uh, I think, uh, expertise in, in television production to create the visuals that are really going to excite these kids as well. So it's a, so it's a different way of learning and we've tried to um, make it such that even the, for those of you that may have had access to the facility in, in St George's that's, that's being set up there now, even the visual side of it is, is, is something quite different. We wanted to make it such that these kids really thought this was a cool thing to be involved with. And you're going to hear um, in a moment that, um, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, you're going to hear in a, in a moment that um, uh, we, um, we, we've, we've, we've started that process in, 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 uh, in, in obviously St. George's. That, that facility is going to be open um, and, and start uh, proper on October 5th, and then we, we, we're going to have a, a, a launch event in terms of uh, uh, putting things on display um, during the America's Cup World Series, but uh, in St. George's prior to that, on the Thursday, the 15th of October, there's quite a program planned, and we're, we're, we're going to have some more detail on that. But just getting back to some of the course content, there's things like um, health and fitness, marine debris, and Bermuda's maritime history included as add-ons and, and sort of connected as part of the um, technical modules that are more focused on, for example, the math and the, and the science and, and so forth. So it's, it's, it really is something that the, the teachers now that have been involved in, as I said, that we had 48 teachers, so I think 26 of those um, were, were public schools involved in those first learnings. Um, and they are really, really enthusiastic about it now, as is, as is the uh, uh, ministry, ministry of Education. So, um, Jennifer, there's, there's one other key aspect to it, and, and uh, we'll talk a bit about this at the, more at the moment. Some of the kids have already got a sort of a, a, snot, a slight snapshot of what this will be, um, uh, you know, once we start the program proper. But also being able to visit the Oracle Team USA base, I think we've had just over um, 200 kids already go and actually tour through the base. Um, the, the program runs, once it starts running from October 5th onwards, it's a week of activity. We're going to show you that in a moment. But the last day, they get the opportunity to go and, and experience and see some of that technology in, in real life at the Oracle team base, which is, of course is fantastic. So already the kids have been in the gym, um, learning about uh, health and nutrition. They're starting to incorporate that into the course content, starting to ask these kids, for example, as Jennifer was saying to me um, this afternoon, starting to ask questions of these kids, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I had cornflakes, was there sugar in the cornflakes and so forth. So they're starting to really start to learn about some of the things that are important in, in, in terms of uh, enjoying a wider lifestyle. Jennifer, would, what about you stand up? Uh, I just want to introduce you to the person that's one of the person, people that's really doing the work. Um, so, and Jennifer, if I wonder if you could just come, come up here and just expand on the, some of the course modules, please. Jennifer Pitchett. Oh, okay. 
Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Russell, for explaining all of the exciting developments that we have with the Endeavor program. It is an absolute privilege to be part of the America's Cup Endeavor program, as everyone's been touching on already. Um, it's really a fantastic opportunity um, to provide all of our youth, ages 9 through 12, with this, again, incredible opportunity to really make learning more fun for them with respect to exposure to the STEAM program through sailing. So that being said, with the modules, it's really focused on hands-on activities. And as Russell, Russell mentioned, about two weeks ago, we had U.S. Sailing Down. They have a REACH program in the U.S. I think they're in um, about 300 different schools. They've been running the program for about three years. So we brought them down. We facilitated with them an America's Cup uh, STEM, STEAM educator training program. And on the first day, we had about 28 uh, it, teachers, 26 of who were from five public schools, five, five middle schools, and one actually was from a primary school, um, from Somerset Primary. Seeing the excitement and seeing those teachers in a student role, when they're building anemometers, when they're measuring the surface area of our sails, our pink, Hobie sail, um, our pink north sails that you might have already seen, as well as just testing buoyancy, which if anyone, anyone was at the Youth Sports Expo over the weekend, you would have seen parents and children alike testing buoyancy and building little boats out of clay and putting marbles in to see who could hold the most marbles. And our winner was actually a five-year-old named Freya who had 35 marbles in her little clay boat. And everyone was saying, how is she five years old? We don't understand. We, we can't beat her. And everyone else was trying to test. So it's really neat to see that learning happening. And that kind of interaction and hands-on activity is exactly what Katrina Williams, um, shout out to our Endeavour Sailing Coordinator, is helping again to develop these hands-on interactive experiential learning for the five-day program. And as Russell mentioned, we have some of our different modules um, on display here on the screen. So we're focusing on some of the modules from the U.S. Sailing REACH program. So again, sail area and perimeter, really focusing on those science and math concepts with the excitement of the America's Cup, highlighting that cutting edge technology that's part of the America's Cup and bringing it back to simple concepts but making it exciting and fun for, for students to learn and want to learn more and get them that sort of appetite for learning. And again, in addition, we have health and nutrition, so focusing on eating for performance and why do these athletes why are they the top sailors around the world? What do they put into their bodies and how do they train? Of course, the pinnacle moment will be on the Friday after they've spent all week with us learning how to sail, learning about all of these STEAM concepts. They'll get to go to the Oracle Team USA base. They'll get to actually interact with the Oracle Team USA lead nutritionist and trainer, get to be in the gym as you saw in the video highlighted a little bit, as well as be in the kitchen and see what do these sailors eat for breakfast? Why do they have to eat? Or why do they want to eat a 10 egg white omelet for breakfast? What the heck does that mean? And how many calories do they burn during a typical training session? And just exposing them to that kind of information and the importance of health and nutrition. And then it's um, also really important for us, it'll um, be all topped off at the National Maritime Museum where we'll highlight the importance of the evolution of the Bermuda rig and the significance of Bermuda's rich maritime history. So hopefully that gives you a little taste of what our 11 and 12 year olds, all of our M1s, grade six and year sevens will experience through the Endeavor program. Thanks, thank you, Jim. And as Jennifer was saying, it's a five-day program, and, and one of the one of the course modules, which I think is really cool for those of you that have been uh, down to the St uh, George's facility, and there's going to be a, another facility set up in, in dockyards, and the target date for that is to begin it in the or have it operational from the beginning of next year. But there's um, various things going on there, such as. Um, the beach cleanups and so forth, and, and these things are also incorporated into the kids' learnings. So they, I think on the, I think it's on the uh, Thursday, Jennifer, where they actually take the the, the fact that they've um, learned how to sail and they've learnt um, some of the reasons uh, uh, or the thinking behind that sailing, and they actually go on a a a, a uh, um, tour of the of the um, uh, St George's um, uh, Bay, I guess, I um, and. Find that they, they, they go to an island and they, they actually um, are involved in, a, in, in cleaning up any debris and then reporting on that uh, um, on um, the, the social pages and so forth, sharing that such that they, they can compare with the other students and start to learn about things. And really, a lot of this is about education because 
it's all very well to say, okay, we want to clean up the plastic and, 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 and get rid of the plastic out of the water. It's a major problem in, 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 in the world today. One of the first steps I believe in doing that is, is educating people that when they're walking along the street and if they see a plastic bottle lying there, why it's important to actually pick it up and dispose of it properly rather than just walking past it and, 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 and leaving it. And so these are the sort of things that we want to install into these, into these kids and, 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 and really create some, some uh, life lessons for them that they can, that are going to benefit them and society on an on a ongoing way. So then also, if we go to the next slide, some of the uh, um, suppliers and, 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 and people involved in it, um, we have, we dif uh, we're focused around four types of boats because obviously we have different size kits and different abilities and some, some of these kids will like to sail in boats with, with um, other people, others uh, you know, might want to sail by themselves or, and so forth. Some of them will want to compete and some of them will just want to go out there and have fun. So we have, we have four uh, different types of boats. And then we also have one land-based um, uh, uh, option, which is called a blow cart, where these, where these kids, some of the more advanced kids, can, can, can get on there and enjoy that, that side of things as well. Or there might be some kids that, that perhaps find getting on the water a little bit um, too much of a challenge, at least in the early stages, so we can open that up and give them, still give them that, that experience of what the power of the wind feels like and what it can actually do. So the, the key is inclusiveness, and one of the things that I should point out with, uh, of course, the, you know, I'm, um, I'm talking about the Endeavour program here, but one of the exciting things, or most exciting things that's happening is the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series that's coming up on, on October 17th and 18th. But in the days prior to that, we are also going to have, uh, have some of these Endeavour boats there, in fact, one, one in each category, with some skilled uh, trainers there, and um, members of the public are going to be able to um, uh, come down and actually experience sailing these boats and, and, and get some instruction from the, from, the, uh, from the instructors. So there's going to be a registration process with that. J Jennifer can perhaps tell us a little bit uh, more about how that's going to work. But it's a fantastic opportunity. We want this to be open and, and inclusive and, and um, uh, make it available to as many people as we possibly can to experience the fun of, of, of getting out on the water. And we, we also, um, we've also been partnering with other entities such as the uh, Andrew Simpson um, um, Sailing Foundation, um, who we did uh, a, a, a partnership with in, in, in the UK and are uh, also doing some things here in the America's Cup um, Village in October. They'll be present as will some other um, sailing entities that are that are you know all have the objective of trying to give kids the opportunity to uh, uh, experience um, uh, experience uh, life on the water. Then in terms of the collaborations, Jennifer, sorry, would you like to come up here again and say this, but uh, talk about this because I think this is really important in terms of some of the collaborations in the Bermuda community. Thank you again, Russell. We're quite excited about all the different um, entities, community organizations, individuals. Again, um, as it's been touched on already, we really want to leverage all the talent and all of the resources that are already in Bermuda. Um, in particular, I know that they don't necessarily want to shout out, but at the top of our list, we have the Bermuda Sea Cadet Association. And as um, Russell mentioned, our East End Fort at the TS Admiral Summers Building wouldn't be possible without our collaboration with the Bermuda Sea Cadet Association. So a um, big wave to them in the back. Other organizations that we're working with really is around the educational curriculum, again, that we've um, emphasized. So we have organizations like BIOS. We have also the importance of SunSmart and prevention, um, especially with the high prevalence, prevalence of skin cancer in Bermuda. We're working with the Bermuda Cancer and Health Center. We have a weekly um, aspect where we'll encourage students um, through the program to be ensuring that they're wearing sunscreen, covering up, wearing a hat, et cetera. 
and then I mentioned about the National Museum of Bermuda already. As well as in terms of the actual look and feel, we want to make sure that, again, we're being very inclusive with respect to how we're developing the visuals around the Endeavour Fort. So we're working with entities and individuals like Omari Dill. If you've ever seen one of the community gardens through Green Rock, you'll know Omari's name already. So we're working with him to make sure that the outside space around the Endeavour Fort is really educational. Instead of just planting trees or flowers, making it look nice, education is really important. So we're making sure that we have a community garden that the students and the sea cadets will be having a chance to yield and learn through that process. We also have uh, Keep Bermuda Beautiful. Of course, everyone knows about their um, coastal cleanup they're doing this, um, this Saturday, marking their 30th anniversary. And we're working with them to produce the education around, again, um, as Russell mentioned about marine debris, educating our youth, making sure that we're um, you know, helping to bring up uh, more aware citizens and helping to create a more greener community by creating awareness of what we can do to make a better, um, greener environment here. And we're working with many other organizations as well, um, some of which I believe we talked about a little bit briefly on the previous slide, but for example, the Ministry of Education and the Department of Youth and Sports with our after school program. So there are many more collaborations that we have, um, but again, it's just really important that um, we're working as much as possible with the local community here. So, so um, when these kids are going through the program, for example, if you, if you take this uh, SunSmart example, a person, a person would come in and, and, and tell the kids, give the kids a short summary as to why, you know, the, the, you know, the, I guess the risk of skin cancer, which is a big problem I understand here, and what they can do to, to mitigate that risk and so forth and the importance of actually of actually um, making sure that they put the right sun, sun uh, protections on and so forth. That's right. Example. Yeah, no, 100%. And of course, being that sailing, of course, being that sailing is on the water, we want to make sure that our kids are protected from the sun as much as possible. So if we can use this opportunity to educate them, make sure they're coming away with that knowledge and um, the idea that they're going to be safe against the sun, then it's all part of the educational experience. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, um, so the Endeavour Day um, program, which uh, uh, is on the uh, 15th of October in St George's, I'd encourage you all to come along and see that. There's going to be various, various activities in the boats, and we're obviously um, targeting that as the, as, the, as the public launch, even though it'll be op operating from October 5th onwards, the, the public launch of the, of the, of the program. Uh, there'll be various other activities as well, such as there's a um, race in the fitted dinghies between some of the America's Cup sailors and some of the locals, which is I'm looking forward to uh, seeing, that's for sure. So that should be a fun day, and uh, I'd encourage all of you to, to come along and participate. And, of course, we couldn't do this. I, I've got to mention the partners, but more than um, uh, the partners, I want to, I want to say this has already been incredibly successful. It's, it's um, fully funded beyond um, uh, the America's Cup in 2017 now. Um, we've had incredible support from the community about this uh, from all areas. And uh, uh, we couldn't do it without these, these, these partners and there are um, many others that are also um, planning to, to, to come in in the future. So, it's, uh, it's a very exciting program and something that I'm already very proud of. Thanks very much.